buenos dias, mis amigos. Spectacular. Think about technology. These lights, the, you know, Tesla cars, spaceships. I mean, yeah. the internet. I mean, unbelievable. And yet, oh so real. My friend, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Jesus Christ is both Lord and Creator, and He is offering you eternal life and the forgiveness of sins if you'll simply believe on Him. If you are not 100% certain that you're going to heaven when you die, I encourage you to watch the video in the description below, The Bible Way to Heaven, and be saved today. God bless. <laughs> I love that. So, there is only one way to be saved and that's by Jesus Christ who has led the way for us so you think about Moses and when he led his people out of Egypt so also will the Lord Jesus Christ lead us out of this wicked world and into a much better world world all right so I'm gonna try to make this quick but I just want to uh, share a thought with you okay so in Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 it says and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood Jesus Christ is the first begotten of the dead he has led the way for us so let's go to um, let's see God was manifest in the flesh okay so without controversy great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh. Okay, so justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Alright, so God came into the flesh and become one of us, and now he's led the way because we can't do it ourselves. This is evident all throughout the scripture that man has failed time and time again so God comes into our flesh and he leads the way for us out of this wicked world and essentially out of this wicked body that we live in and he's gonna deliver us into a perfect body into a perfect world and not just a better world but a perfect world without sin, without death, without sorrow, without crying, and without pain. All right. It's almost unimaginable. It really is. Um, because the, this world is so full of wickedness. And, you know, it's not just those around us that are wicked, but even our own thoughts are wicked. And those of us that are born of God want out <laughs> right we want out of this and um, and uh, the good news is that we there is somebody that's going to be able to deliver us out and into a perfect world okay so let's go to Revelation 20 because this is so uh, so odd to me people can't figure out what the first resurrection is in Revelation 20 verse 5 but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished this is the first resurrection you can't figure out who the first resurrection is it tells us right here in Revelation 1 Jesus Christ is the first begotten of the dead yet you're still I can't figure this one out it's mind-boggling really and I really I sincerely 
believe that people purposely are ignorant. They're being stupid on purpose because they want to teach this comic book doctrine that does not align with the Bible. They want to be deceived. They want to believe in uh, superheroes and that sort of thing. Now, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding at, at all. All right. So if we go to uh, I'm playing, what is it, John? What am I thinking of here? John 10, or is it John 11? Let me. I apologize. What am I looking for here? It's John 11. Then. Okay, I got to think about the verse. I apologize. I'm thinking about how mind-bogglingly ignorant people are. Willingly ignorant. I don't know how you could read the Bible and make the claim that Jesus is not the first resurrection. To me, it's it's crazy. It should be obvious. Now, being able to put all this together, that's one thing. But then to claim, to make the claim that Jesus is not the first resurrection, that's going... <laughs> That's going out of your way on purpose. It really is. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. That's not enough for you? Even though in the very first chapter of Revelation 1, or of the book of Revelation in chapter 1, it says, Jesus Christ is the first begotten of the dead. Jesus himself says, I am the resurrection. You get to Revelation 20 and you can't figure it out. unbelievable so I just want to you know try to make this as clear as possible because you have to you have to establish that fact that Jesus is the resurrection and we are partakers of his resurrection he has washed us from our sins in his own blood we are partakers of his resurrection the rest of the dead live not again till the thousand years were finished the rest of the dead live not again what happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are resurrected uh, first the dead in Christ right then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord the rest of the dead live not again so this right here this destroys a whole lot of these false teachings the rest of the dead live not again so if you die today Jesus is still coming but you will not live again until the thousand years are finished until Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven see right now we are partakers of his resurrection he is the resurrection he straight away very plainly says I am the resurrection and so blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection see if you if that's talking about you you are not the first resurrection it says blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection it doesn't say blessed and holy are they that are the first resurrections or whatever it doesn't say blessed and holy is you that are the first resurrection it 
it's as clear as it gets now the problem is people don't want to believe what it actually says now blessed and holy is he that has part we are partakers of his resurrection he has washed us from our sins in his own blood blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power Jesus says I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die the second death has no power over us that are born of God is it could it not be more obvious so you have to establish these absolute truths and when you do that then that nullifies all the false teachings that are being taught in the world today and it's rather incredible really so my you know obviously what I'm trying to do here is to make it real simple so that you can see uh, that there is no 1000 year reign of Christ it's not mentioned a single time anywhere in the Bible not even in Revelation 20 Revelation 20 says they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years it doesn't say Christ reign, reigns a thousand years we know that Jesus reigns forever and of his kingdom there is no end right? there is no seven year tribulation you know if, if I could I'd, I'd you know google it or whatever search it uh, it, it can't it I could google it but I, I can't search it in the Bible because it's not in the Bible no seven year tribulation there's no third temple this is the th amazing thing to me I, you how can you claim to be a Christian and then also preach this idea of a third temple it it doesn't make sense man it would be like saying Satan is the brother of Jesus you could you'll get people to agree with you but it's not true and 70 AD has no biblical significance what so ever all right so let me just show you something real quick here if I can find it and it's something to keep in mind here for those that are eager to learn all right for those that really want the truth and want to learn what the Bible says all right if you want to learn and know what the Bible says then uh, then I guess uh, you gotta start reading it and uh, and uh, nobody needs to read the Bible more than me really because I don't remember where that verse is Oh, I didn't go down far enough, did I? Right there it is. Now, 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abides in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. Now, we know by reading in, like, the book of John, for example, that, let's, let me re finish this before I go off of it but as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie and even as it has taught you ye shall abide in him and of course uh, Jesus uh, really explains this pretty well in John um, here the spirit of truth 
even the spirit of truth here in 14, 15, 16, he talks about the spirit of truth. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you the, from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. So we don't need a man to teach us what God says. It's kind of silly, really. We have God to teach us what God says. It's, I mean, it, to me it sounds silly. I mean, it's, it's so simple, it's silly. But we live in a world today where uh, people desire a, a man to teach them rather than God. It, it's insane. But, you know, this is also, there's a pattern of error that we see all throughout history and of course even uh, the Jews they didn't does they didn't care to have a, a savior all they wanted was a king okay and this um, you know you can go back to Moses when he was on the mountain and uh, he come down and they were worshiping uh, the golden calf or whatever you know this is a pattern of error all throughout human history and the Jews cried out away with him away with him crucify him Pilate said unto him shall I crucify your king and the chief priests answered we have no king but Caesar this is uh, Kaiser or Caesar whatever his name is okay so this is a pattern of error people are design, desiring men and leaders more than God so it's it's really insane it really is okay let me go back to first John chapter 2 right. in verse 27 if I can remember that but the anointing which ye ever seed of him abideth in you and ye need not that any man teach you okay and now little children abide in him that when he shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming if ye know that he is righteous ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him now let me just uh, share one more thing out of this uh, chapter here starting in verse 15 love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him you think about how wicked this world is why would you love the world why would you uh, be desirous of worldly gain when you know all that you gain in the world is going to be taken away from you. Uh, you know, you, at some point you got to be honest with yourself, right? You're trying to gain something in the world only to have it taken away. All right, your desire should be for the life to come, for everlasting life. Those things that will endure forever not not these things that are going to be taken away from you either in this life or when you die right so the so here let's go to 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passes away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Alright? So, um, there's a distinction between the world and the will of God that abides forever. That endures forever. Right? Now let's go back to Revelation 20. 
Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such that the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now isn't this interesting? If you go back to Revelation 1, the very first chapter, and the very next verse after we read that Jesus is the first begotten of the dead it says he has made us kings and priests unto God and his father he, and then you, you get to Revelation 20 you can't figure this stuff out I mean you're going to teach that well the, the, the priest that, that happens after Jesus comes that we're not priests of God right now it, I mean just be honest and address this instead these people willingly ignore or even falsely teach that there's coming a time after Jesus returns where they will be priests of God and of Christ and are gonna reign over unsaved people for a thousand years in their glorified bodies and having sex and making babies I've showed you the, those videos of those preachers but that's not what the scripture says at all now you go here and that's what I think the whole the whole reason why people teach a thousand year period after Jesus returns is so that they can imagine a thousand year period of sexual activity all right that's what I think it's all based on I seriously do and I've shown you videos on that where people straight plainly say that that they expect that time period to come that they expect to have sex after the Lord Jesus comes and I just showed you in first John chapter 2 that's not gonna happen all right so in Exodus uh, I'm sorry, Exodus 19. All right, Exodus 20 is when um, we read the the Ten Commandments, right? And Exodus 19, um, God says to Moses, He's now therefore, if you will let's see, uh, where do I want to start here? Let me just, yeah. Let me start in verse 5. Okay. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Now isn't that interesting? Because in, let's take this one. In 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, um, in verse 9 it says, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation of peculiar people. Isn't that interesting? Here yeah, it says in Exodus 19, Ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. A royal priesthood and holy nation of peculiar people we're seeing the same thing written here now go to Revelation 20 and you're gonna say well no that's that's for the future that's not for now wait in is Exodus 19 is this about the future or is this about right now or right then when it was spoken if it was for right then when it was spoken and then Revelation 20 is for the future well, what about now I mean your doctrine is nonsense and you're going too you're trying too hard to uh, you know preach and teach this Peter Pan doctrine that doesn't square all right so here in Exodus 19 first Peter chapter 2 it very plainly says that we are a royal priesthood we are a kingdom of priests we are even called to preach the gospel to every creature all right now, revelation 20 they shall be priests of god and of christ all right you still don't you're still not sure <laughs> first 
Revelation 1 and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. He has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Okay, we right now we are kings and priests. Right now, so when we get to Revelation 20, it says they shall be priests of God and Christ. It's talking about right now. Alright? I mean, it's very simple. It's not rocket science. Now, if it doesn't square with your, you know, fantasy land, you know, thousand year, you know, party, your no pants party for a thousand years, then you're going to squirm when it comes to this. You're going to lie. And you're going to willfully deceive yourself. Now, let's go back up to verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. <laughs> Again, we are kings unto God. Right. We are a royal priesthood right now all right right now the judgment of God has already been given to us that are born of God we're saved sealed secured sanctified forever the judgment of God has been already finalized for us that are born of God we are the kings that sit on heavenly thrones and the judgment of eternal life has already been given to us. Yet you can't figure this out. You want to try to make it fit your Peter Pan doctrine. You'll say the words, but you won't make any sense. And a lot, of, you know, it's very common today. It's very common to hear people say the words, but not be able to connect the dots. Not be able to make any sense of what they're saying. They have no idea what they're saying. And I've shown you that over and over again. This stuff is very simple. It gets complicated when you start to listen to men rather than believing the Word of God. I'm very serious about that. Very serious. It straight way plainly says the simple truth all throughout the Bible all throughout we get the same thing being taught to us over and over and over again it's the same thing from Genesis to Revelation we're getting told and taught the same thing and it's amazing it's amazing how many people don't see it all right, when the thousand years are expired, this is the end of the world, right? And they shall live and reign with Christ for a thousand years, right? The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. Right now, at the end of the thousand years, Satan is loosed. Well, remember in the Old Testament, there was one group of people, one nation of God, and outside of that nation were the kingdoms deceived or the nations deceived. Okay, so now Jesus comes along and he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes. So he, he's, tear, he's torn down the walls. Alright, so now Satan is, he's handcuffed. He can't go and deceive entire nations like he had done in the Old Testament outside of the nation of Israel. Alright, now when Jesus comes we are lifted up and voila, Satan once again has all the people to himself like like he did in the Old Testament now um, uh, what happens is when we're up in the air what happens when Satan is loosed he goes out to deceive the nations to gather them together very simple stuff man because we're reading about this all throughout the Bible what we're reading here has been echoed many times all throughout the Bible. 
All right, and they compass the camp of the saints about. We get numerous verses all throughout the Bible echoing the very same thing. And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. I mean, we should have known this. You should have known this. You should have known this. I should have known this, too. Uh, when I read Genesis 3 for the first time. Because in verse 15, the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his head. Heal. This is talking about the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up in the air and the unsaved are gathered at our feet and fire comes down from heaven and devours them. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is when Jesus puts an end to all evil forever and ever. This stuff is so, so simple. I mean, if we're just getting repeated over and over. All you have to do is start reading the Bible and you'll start seeing it. It's all over the Bible. Echoed time and time and time again. It's incredible. Alright, so what am I looking for here? Is it Matthew 14 I'm looking for? Is it Matthew 14? What's in Matthew 10? Matthew 13. See, I'm way off. See, i got to start reading the Bible too. You're not the only one, right? Jesus talks about the parable of the wheat and the tares. And what's he say? He says, let them both grow together. In the time of the harvest, that's the end of the world, right? The harvest is the end of the world. The end of the world is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It's at the end of the thousand years. And what happens? I will say to the reapers, which are the angels, gather ye first the tares and bind them. Right? This is when Satan is loosed. And he gathers together the unsaved, right? And and they are you know bound and they are burned. Gather the wheat into my barn. All right. So first, go back to Revelation 20. First, the tares, which are the unsaved, which are all the nations, peoples that are gathered by Satan. Are gathered together and they are burned then we that are saved are placed back down on the earth or but it's going to be a new earth with new heavens right so in Matthew 13 the time of the harvest first gather the tares bind them and burn them right and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his you know, this is when Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. And we read about this all throughout the Bible. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And fire come down from heaven, or I'm sorry, and fire come down from God out of heaven and devoured him. It's the same thing. We're, get, we're reading the same thing all throughout the Bible, time and time again. It's very simple. It's not rocket science. Jesus is coming in the clouds of heaven, and when he does, it's the end of the world. All the unsaved are destroyed. The time is up. There is no more opportunity for the unsaved to get saved. The very moment the very split second that Jesus appears, it's it. That's it. Game over. It's triple zeros or four zeros or double zeros or whatever. It's the end of the, the shot clock is down to zero and you have no more shots. 
Your only opportunity is to get saved today. Now I am. I'm, there's nothing at all preventing Jesus from coming today. There's nothing in the Bible whatsoever. I, would, I mean, whatever people are teaching that says, well, this has to happen in the future. Uh, you know, the Antichrist has to come. Yeah, the Antichrist is already here. People that talk about the... Uh, you know, seven-year tribulation hasn't happened yet. Oh, yeah, it's we're. In, I mean, that, that's about as that's about as low IQ as it gets, right there. And people that teach this stuff, uh, seven-year tribulation. It's nowhere in the Bible. Uh, I can't tell you what religion they are. It's hard for me to imagine that they're Christian. Okay, in John 16 verse 33, these things have I spoken unto you that in me, in, that in me, ye might have peace. Okay. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. Uh huh? But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. I am, you gotta be kidding me. If you're not having tribulation right now, you're not having troubles, uh, something, something ain't right. Man, something ain't right. Alright, where was I? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, and the, so there's no there's no seven year tribulation. That's not in anywhere in the Bible at all. And um, look, if you have questions about Daniel nine, let's talk about it. I've made videos. It, it's a it's almost stupid how people are teaching this falsely. They're teaching this idea that the Antichrist is gonna make an end of sins. And he's gonna make a pact, a covenant with Israel or you know, the, the, you know, whatever. I, it's mind-bogglingly stupid. It's straight up. That's it. I mean, come on. Jesus, I just showed you. I just showed you it to begin this video. Revelation 1. Wasn't it? Wasn't it Revelation 1, verse 5? Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Jesus has made an end to sins. What are you, what are you teaching, man? You, you're teaching the idea that the Antichrist is going to do that? Hey, you're some kind of stupid, man. That's unbelievable. This, the 70 weeks have already been fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled it when he laid down his life putting an end of sins and makes reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in he brings in everlasting righteous you think the antichrist is going to do that and he, <laughs> you think the antichrist is going to come and build a third temple yeah. You're not Christian at all if you're teaching that stuff. If you're believing that stuff. You're not that's not even remotely Christian. in John chapter two, Jesus talks um, you know, he, he says, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And so you're gonna say, No, Jesus didn't destroy the temple they got to build a third temple yet before the end of the world. Well, that, they've been saying that since I was a teenager. And that still hasn't happened. They're talking about the red heifer. That still hasn't happened. It's never going to happen. It's not in the Bible. It has no biblical... I mean, they could build a third temple. They could build a fourth temple. They could build 20 temples. It has nothing to do with the Bible. Jesus destroyed this temple that we're living in. He has led the way for us out of this wicked world. He has destroyed the temple and rebuilt it. He is the first begotten of the dead. He destroyed the temple. The Jews said 40 and 6 years was this temple and building, and that will thou rear it up in three days? Even today, see, he was speaking of his body. Even today, there are so many people that just. They don't, just like the Jews, they didn't understand. And even today, they don't, people don't understand. It's, 
It's insanity. It's absolutely insane how stupid people are. Right? I mean, really. Am I being too hard? People are just straight stupid on purpose. The 70 weeks of Daniel has already been fulfilled. The, even the, the until even until the consummation this is the end of the world right here right. and he shall confirm talking about Jesus the Messiah the Antichrist is not the Messiah I guarantee it so why are you teaching it right. because you're stupid you, you don't believe the Bible you want to preach a fairy tale in time story that doesn't line up with scripture at all I'm not kidding you you see here where it says the people the prince there are a lot of people out there they don't believe that they wanna they wanna turn this around to say the prince of the people rather than the people of the prince and we get the same thing in Revelation 20 they don't wanna teach they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years they want to they want to teach Christ lives and reigns a thousand years they, they flip it around they get it backwards they don't believe what it actually says it's astonishing but you know that's what happens when you don't believe the Word of God you fall under these delusions that don't square with the Bible that's just the way it's supposed to be that's the way it should be All right, if you don't believe it then you shouldn't understand it and if you don't believe it you are you're not gonna understand it then that's how it is it's incredible it's remarkable to see all these people teaching these false doctrines and it's very apparent they don't believe what the Bible actually says it's incredible Alright, so, and then, um, and then you hear a lot of people say, oh, 70 AD is when they destroyed the temple. No. Unless you're going to claim Jesus died, 70 AD? No. You're stupid. You're a liar, and there's a reason why you don't get it. And it's because you don't believe what the Bible said. It's that simple. It's not rocket science, man. Um, you know, there's. It's interesting here. I'll wrap this up real quick. The Bible is very, very simple. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. This stuff is so simple, man. You think about the Word of God, man. Word. Let's do it this way. Now, believe me, I wouldn't be. Nah, I'm as dumb as they get, and uh, I wouldn't be able to teach if, if, you know, being smart was a requirement for teaching the word of God. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't stand a chance, man. I really. Let's be honest. But because I believe what the Bible says I believe that these words are actually directly from God and not from man at all there's no middleman these words come directly from God and in uh, oh, that's not that's not what uh, oh what am I looking for here oh I forget I forget what I'm seeing. I told you I'm pretty dumb. Pretty dumb. The law of the Lord is perfect. Okay. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. You think about the Word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart wow man the word of God is 
incredible. It's not just words on a paper, man. It's not just words. The, Jesus, Jesus says the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. <laughs> You're, I mean, come on, man. You don't get it? These aren't just words, man. These aren't just, you know, words on a piece of paper. This, it's incredible. But if you don't believe the words, you're not going to be able to see it. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the big dummies like me that's what it says making wise the some you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure the stuff out all you have to do is believe even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart See, you could be smarter than a whip. But if you don't believe, you're not going to understand. If you don't believe these words come directly from God, there's a veil upon your heart. You're not going to get it. You're stupid. You think you're smart. Everybody around you says you're smart. But inwardly, you're dumber than a box of rocks. Because you refuse to believe the word of God. It's that simple. Even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. See, the problem with being smart is you're full of pride. And because you're full of pride, you think you're smarter than everybody else. You think you know more than everybody else. And that pride is holding you back. But when you're dumb, dumber than dumb, like me, then you're free and you have no pride obstructing preventing you from seeing the truth all right now i better i better I better end it on that let's see let me just uh oh let me just uh say uh, have a good day you guys have quite if i'm being too mean and lean and rough and tough and all that sort of stuff you know, let me know you know, okay if i'm stupid you can let me know that too because i might agree with you right i might agree with you but if you think i got something wrong well let's talk about it all right the name calling and all that sort of stuff, that's fine. That ain't getting us nowhere. If you think I got something wrong, let's talk about that, exactly. Let's put it on the table and see what we got. All right, have a good day.